but then the sort of the, the really, really special bit is Schumacher. Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Now I think you all know I'm a huge fan of the Ferrari 360. That is indeed my own Ferrari 360 Modena, which I'm currently collecting from Windrush Car Storage, where I keep it. And of course, I've harked on about my obsession for the Challenge Tradali ever since I started this channel. And that's why today is a very exciting day, because I'm off to get up close and personal with arguably the rarest and sort of most ultimate version of the 360, that Ferrari made. But for now, let's jump into my car because I have some exciting news about my plans for this thing over the coming months. Let's go. Anyone else get seasonal affective disorder? It's when you get sort of down because of the weather. It's called sad. It's a genuine condition. I, I feel like I might be suffering from it because London at the moment is not a very creatively inspiring place to be. Every time I wake up and I get my cameras out, it's just like grey and dreary and wet and... Anyway, I'm not going to let it affect me today because today is going to be a great day. Before we get into it properly, let me update you on this car because yes, after two and a half years of searching, I have finally found and purchased an official Ferrari Challenge Fidali exhaust for this car. <laughs> it's happening in a couple of weeks, maybe in a month or so. Uh, this car's going to be headed down to AV Engineering to have the exhaust fitted. At the same time, they're also going to update the ECU to Challenge Fidali ECU. Now, now that's a very complicated and long-winded process. and. I need to do a whole separate video explaining that process, which I will do. Right now, I just, I don't even know where to start. But no matter what, this car is going to go through a whole, I mean, it's going to, it's going to take on a whole new personality. It's going to, it's a second life for the 360. And once those changes have been made, I'm taking it on the trip of a lifetime, on the road trip of a lifetime. I neglected this car last year and I'm going to be making up for it over the coming months. So yes, fans of the 360, stay tuned, lots to come. But right now, I'm headed to Girardo & Co. They are a sort of specialist, I don't know how you call them, not supercar dealership, like classic race car dealer. Uh, anyway, they handle some truly, truly special stuff and right now, they have a handful of very special cars in stock. So I'm going to head there and meet up with Max Girardo, the founder, for sort of walkthrough of, yeah, of those cars that I mentioned, including one very special, very rare, and ultimate version of my beloved 360. The library got so big and the books got so heavy <laughs> that we had to get the guy to come and put a, a, a little a little stick here because <laughs> literally the whole bookshelf was just going going down. It was going to be on the floor in a minute. Let's start off with this, because I don't even know what I'm looking at. So this is an Allegretti. Um, it's funny, actually, a client came in the other day and he's like, wow, is that like a little hill climb car? Well, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a child's car. It's a little model um, oh, no uh, child's car. It's made all out of aluminium, made in the 60s in Italy. All hand-built aluminium. It's got a, a four-cylinder Benelli engine and about 250cc. I actually bought it initially thinking that my son could drive it. Um, I was told that I'd be mad to let, uh, <laughs> let, him, uh, let him... I can in. assume I know who told you that it would yes. be mad. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, exactly. Um, they made a single-seater, a birdcage, and this, and it was so expensive. They were like 100 million euros, like sort of a, like 50,000 euros back in the, uh, in the 70s, and they never made any more because no one bought them. There was so much money. Porsche 27 RS uh, lightweight. It's just come in from, uh, from a client of ours in, uh, in Australia. Quite rare, this one. There's only three in the world with the, uh, with the sunroof. So, uh, so it makes it quite special. All, we've had all the Porsche, you know, the 911 Aficionados coming. Oh, it's the one with the sunroof. And there's only three with the sunroof. It's the original They like colors. to spot things like that as well. I've oh, heard. yeah. The Porsche oh. guys are like, they're, they, they know their stuff. It's a cult. It's, it's a cult. A, it's, a, it's a cult. There we go. 308 Group B Michelotto. Probably a little bit more, uh, uh, more exciting. So, um, uh, so I don't know if you know, but Michelotto made 14 rally cars. 
uh, at the time. Four of them were the Group B cars. This is one of the four Group B uh, rally cars. It's super, super cool. I love the fact that uh, Toivonen, uh, Harry Toivonen drove this actual car. Um, so uh, so it, it's like lots of history, WRC events, and I just, I, I love the wheels. I love the wheels. Those I love everything about this. I'm just going to say, I just didn't interrupt you. Like, I mean, the wheels are great, yes, but this whole, the fact that there was a rally Ferrari, I mean, is Isn't that great? And there's only like, this, this is what, I was going to tell you something the other day, there's only 14 of them. This is a, a real competition built Ferrari that, and it was you know, done by the factory. Look at the, the gear shift knob, it's like a, like, just like the F40, like an F40 LM. Oh, I love the big it. white knob, it, it, it's, it's the rally lights on the front. I just, and it's just so many races, so much history. I just, I think this is, this is like, to me, such a good buy for somebody. Best bit is, it's got number plates, jump in and drive us to the pub mean, as well. you would ruin everyone on King's Road. Yeah. You turned up in this, I mean, what a I was, I was thinking more sort of like, you know, down the country lane. Sure, King's sure, Road's yeah, good yeah, as well. You know, that's that's unfortunately, a lot of uh, people go in London is to the King's Road. <laughs> but we're gonna move on to a uh, Ferrari, which is, this is a little bit more up my street. Um, we're gonna tease the car I'm actually here to see, but we can't but, move past this, because yeah. as an F1 freak, a Schumacher fan, and a Ferrari fan, Tell, tell my audience why this is my dream. So this is your dream because it's the last Ferrari V12 Formula One car. Three litre, this car revs to 17,000 RPM. And, and you need to, you know, when we're finishing this, I'm going to go into YouTube and you type in 1995 or 1994 Ferrari F1 and just listen to the noise these cars used to make. This was really special. Um, it raced uh, with uh, Jean Alesi, came second in San Marino, but then the sort of the, the really, really special bit is Schumacher. So Schumacher signs with Ferrari, he leaves Benetton, and famously, this is the very first Ferrari Formula One car that he ever drove. Oh, and, really? and, and you know, it was really different. He said, oh yeah, I just, he went for a test. You don't understand it, at Fiorano, there was 20,000 people there to watch him drive this car for the very, very first time. You know, and, and, and well, we, obviously we know what Schumacher did at, uh, at Ferrari, right? It was, well, that's the but thing. this was the beginning. This, this is the it. start of his journey. What I love actually, everyone on the brochure, you've got one of those shots of one of those early tests. So the first time anyone saw Schumacher in a Ferrari, it was this it was actual this car. This actual car. There's the great pictures of him sitting on the wheel in a, in a white suit. You know, it was, it was no sponsors yet. It was the very, very first time. And famously in the press afterwards, he said, uh, he said with this package, how could LAZ and Berger not win the world championship? And everyone was like, ooh. <laughs> but then, Throwing shade. It's so just the ultimate, I mean, it's red with tan. It's red with tan, <laughs> what else would you it's want? It's like resale spec. <laughs> oh, but what I love is this is, you know, we're getting to that era in F1 where really aerodynamic trickery and carbon fiber and all of these elements were really starting to, to show through, even the steering wheel, you know, you've got a ton of buttons on there, flappy paddles. Uh, it's a really sweet spot, I think, in F1 history. Just look at this, sort of like the canals and the wind and bits coming off that front wing it's yeah it's iconic it's super cool and i just love the fact it's in this room i mean you know it's so just unexpected saying, just saying, do you think that schumacher or any of the ferrari engineers ever thought that there would be their formula one car it's current formula one car sitting in central London in a, so cool. in a show next to some sofas. They, 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 they probably think it's blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure they do. But uh, anyway, as you can see, a load of spare parts hanging around as well. We've got yeah. all the, the wet weather wheels, which we would probably need today. <laughs> Starter <laughs> kit. And Starter kit, three heater. So uh, yeah, cool. yeah, just, just uh, it, it is, it is. Almost literally get in and, uh, and, and drive. And, and I have to say, you've got to listen to this engine. I mean, can you imagine? 18,000 RPM on a V12. You know, the next year they went to 10 cylinders, which, don't get me wrong, still amazing, but something about a Ferrari V12 Howling Formula 1 car. singing V12 is just, yeah, unbelievable. And we're going to move on to, well, nearly the main nearly, show, but nearly. I mean, I think this, this deserves a little bit of a mention as well. 288 GTO, um, uh, you know, everyone talks about the, the set of supercars, right? 288 GTO, a 40, a 50, Enzo. Uh, we were, we've just come back from Paris, from Retromobile. We had the, the, the full shebang, the whole, the whole set. And you know what? After spending so much time with all of them, for me, it always, always, always used to be a 40, a 40, a 40. I'm kind of like, sort of, having a, like a penchant for the 288 GTO now. You don't really see them. I mean, they're, they're much rarer. Much rarer. Right? It's sort of the connoisseur's Ferrari. 
right? Sure. Down the King's Road. I know you like to yeah. drive down the King's Road. <laughs> that wasn't me, by the way. I was saying that the people do. It's not, I'm not the King's Road guy. Don't put that on me. Sure. Just, it's a bit more discreet. It's, it's, but yet yeah, it's so cool. Uh, super, super rare. You never see them, as you said. I just, you know what? I think this might be the one to have at the moment. I, I would agree with you. I think you know it's, it's the it was the start, I suppose, as well, mm. um, and the fact that you don't really see them too often, and it's maybe not the one that everyone harks on about. There we go. But exactly. that's kind of a reason why exactly it right. kind of wins. And we've got a cool, cool name, right? GTO. There we go. That's exactly it, Monica. We haven't seen that often with Ferrari's mm. history, but now they're making so many cars. Who knows when it's going to be coming back? Oh, yeah, coming back. <laughs> but anyway, look, as on. amazing as everything's been, I'm going to put you out your pain. Yeah, I, I need this. Is I mean, literally, why I came down there. The minute you guys posted this online I had a slight panic attack <laughs> so look just talk me through what we're actually looking at because this is a car from factory this is a Ferrari car exactly so this is actually the first Ferrari GT race car so Ferrari decides right we're gonna get into GT racing okay so we're gonna build our own GT cars they go to Michelotto uh, there's a long-standing relationship between uh, Michelotto and, uh, and and Ferrari interesting little bit of sort of connection the 308 that we saw earlier on also built by Michelotto so Ferrari goes off to Michelotto, they say, right, we're gonna build a GT car to go, uh, uh, to go racing, and you gotta take your current model. So they take the 360, here it is, um, send it off to Michelotto, give it the full treatment. So this is not, you know, you've gotta really make the difference. It's not a, a 360 challenge or a 360 challenge, which are derived from the road car. Yeah, this is derived from the road car, but this is completely modified to GT2 spec. Well, that's it, and when you get up close and personal, you start to see just how much went into this car to transform it. It is a completely different beast. Completely different beast. These are the cars that you, uh, that you see or you saw racing at, uh, at Le Mans. Um, this is a fully bred competition GT Ferrari built by the factory and, you know, tiny little detail, but, but, but really important, four-digit chassis number. So, you know, all the competition Ferraris always have four-digit chassis numbers, so you don't get the 18-digit uh, the bin. This is a four-digit Ferrari competition car. Unbelievable. And what I love is that because of the long-standing relationship with Michelotto, and obviously the Pin and Farina design of the 360, in my mind, at least, it's still beautiful. It like, is, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It's so dramatic looking. I mean, just look at that front bumper and that splitter and the wider stance. But somehow, still, it just looks Actually, the, incredible. The, 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 the yellow, the yellow covers over the uh, over over the lights, the, the wing. You know, you know, you, you sort of look at these. It's just, it's just it's just right, isn't it? Yeah, and it, and it shouldn't work because a lot a lot of the time Ferraris with wings, I think, are a bit dodgy. But that's just subtle enough. It's just, just appropriate right. enough, exactly. And then look at the gap there between the wheel and the actual body. I mean, it's just all so perfect and so engineered. And for me, I mean, this is this is the ultimate version of the 360 that everyone yeah, did. How many were, were made? So they made 20 in the first series and then 20 in a, in a second series. This is the very, very, for a first series car. And it was cool also because you as a privateer, you could go to Ferrari and if you're a good client, you could go buy one. So this is exactly, you know, the, the first owner of this car is exactly what he did. Gentleman driver, bought himself a 360. I mean, heck of a gentleman driver, he just used it for fun. Just used it for fun. <laughs> what a legend. So this wasn't race, was it? This was this just was a race. It was just his a, a track day toy. His track day toy that he took out. But how cool is that? Oh, what a legend. A car that could like, you know, some people run on Le Mans. No, I just have one as a track day toy. <laughs> Now people are going excited about the Pista Pilotis. <laughs> this guy put them to shame yeah. because, yeah, I mean, this was uh, a, a whole other level. But yeah, absolutely beautiful. Loads of elements on it, which I think are super interesting. And so you get up close and personal to look at all these carbon fiber air intakes at the front. As we mentioned, those yellow headlights uh, inside, completely cut out, specialist seats. But yeah, I love a thing. You know, the other thing is, that, and it's a, and it's a shame that we're 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 you know not a shame. It's great that we're here, but uh, but. A little bit enclosed, but the sound. I was going to say that's what I was going to ask. This car, of all you know, after this car, they made the 430 race car, they made the 458, the 488. But you ask anyone, the 360 is the loudest, the best sounding. I, I, I don't know why. I can't tell you why, but it is certainly the most evil sounding of them all. It is just epic. Maybe yeah. regulations after they couldn't make as much noise. I don't know what it is, but. You fire this up and it is epic. I mean, literally on the way here, I've been talking about the sound of the 360 because I'm, I'm finally getting a Challenge Stradale exhaust for my car. So I'm literally banging on about it. And, and so I can only dream of what this thing must sound like. All I'm going to hold you to is if someone doesn't come and snap it up and we get a dry day and you ever take it out of here to reshuffle this amazing showroom, 
call me. Because <laughs> I just need to hear it. I was about to do a piece saying that, you know, maybe instead of one day buying a Challenge for Dali, I should buy an actual Challenge car. I mean, the GT is probably always going to be a bit of a stretch, but yes, this, <laughs> this would make things a little bit impractical, but oh, this car is so fascinating and amazing because of the lengths Ferrari went to. I mean, this is a proper race car. This is no gimmick. And it's, oh. Still a 360. What I love is the, the gear selector down the middle. Looks like it could be in a modern. Oh, um, but wow. I mean, steering wheel at the top. <laughs> Proper. I'm going to be honest. I went to Gerardo and Co. for the 360. I fell in love with the F1 car. I think Fire picked it on Instagram. I kind of assumed that it was a 1995 Formula 1 car just with Schumacher stickers on it. I didn't realise it was the car that Schumacher test drove, the first Ferrari F1 car he ever drove. I mean, my, my heart is still kind of racing from that fact. You all know my Formula 1 obsession, my Schumacher obsession, my Ferrari obsession. It's just the culmination of everything great. I wish, I wish I had the money to afford something like that, but it's multiple millions, so never going to happen. But anyway, that 360 GT, super, super cool, and it's got me thinking, whilst this Challenge Stradale will forever remain one of my dream cars, if this car is going to sort of get closer to it with the exhaust and the ECU update, and fundamentally has the arguably better manual gearbox, is the CS going to feel too close to this? Would I be better off getting an actual challenge. Forget the Stradale, what about a 360 race car? Maybe I'm going mad, but you all know 2020 is the year of go big or go home. Anyway, I'll leave it at that for now. Lots of exciting things to come, lots of Ferrari content to come this year. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Make sure to go follow Gerardo and Co. I'll put a link to their Instagram below and stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.